Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Titania Meld. What is going on, everybody? And yes, it is finally time. The Brothers War has just dropped literally like 10 minutes ago as of the recording of this on MTG Arena. As such, we know we are gonna be jumping in with some amazing stuff, but we are gonna be jumping in blind for a couple decks, so I'm just gonna go ahead and warn everybody right now. If you're watching this because you expect that I know every little detail, I'm telling you now I don't. I am gonna be learning along with you and hopefully just having a fun time. We're here at It Resolves just to have a blast and play some decks and hopefully learn a little thing along the way. But let's talk about the deck. This is brought to you by MTG Arena Zone. This was one of the three main decks that they posted or that I saw that they posted. Uh, and it really caught my eye because the goal of the deck is to meld into Titania, Gaia, Incarnate. Now, if you don't know what this card is, it's a Vigilance, Trample, Reach, and Haste creature. Power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control, and when it enters the battlefield, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. You can pay four, three and a green, put four 1-1 one, one counters on target land you control, it becomes a 0-0 zero, zero ele elemental creature with haste, it's still a land. So, uh, <laughs> how do we get there, right? That That's the game ender, but how do we get there? So, Titania, Voice of Gaia, on the flip side, so this is, good, this is gonna be the side that we actually play, one and two green, it is a three four with reach. Already really good value. Whenever one or more land cards are put into the graveyard from anywhere, doesn't matter where, you gain two life. So this is gonna keep us in the game against a lot of the early aggressive decks. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more land cards in your graveyard and you both own and uh, you both own and control Titania Voice of Gaia and a land named Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, you exile them and meld them into Gaia Incarnate. Now, for those of you who don't know, Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, is a land. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature, of which we have a handful. Uh, taps for green. You can pay two and two green, tap it, create a 2-2 two -two bear creature token, and then mill three cards. You can only do that as a sorcery, but that's going to help us fuel the graveyard. Like I said, we do need to get a handful of lands, basically four lands into our graveyard. Now, a lot of the deck is built around this, right? So we've got a handful of ways. We've got Curate, which surveils two and then puts a card back into the graveyard. We've got uh, Founding the Third Path, which will also throw some cards into the graveyard. Uh, Shigeki is kind of an interesting one, so we can use this to kind of look at the top four. Pull uh, a land card from among them, put it onto the battlefield, and then you put the rest into your graveyard, so we can kind of do a little bit of shenanigans there. Uh, we do have a Terra Sunder to destroy artifacts or enchantments, or excuse me, exile them. Uh, you can just exile a non-land permanent instead if you get that kicker cost as well. This does have Silver Scrutiny as a two of. For some removal, we have Cut Down, Go for the Throat, and then Infernal Grasp, which is kind of cool. Uh, Go for the Throat being the new one in Standard right now. This has been a card before. This is not new. Uh, however, this is new for Standard right now. Uh, we do also have Urborg Repossession. So, one mana sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. You gain two life. If it was kicked, you can return another target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand as well. This gives us a way to pull back those combo pieces, right? So, we are milling a lot, sometimes blindly. If we can pull back those cards, all of a sudden now, now we have basically an easy way to make sure that we've guaranteed the combo. That's not always, that's oversimplification, but that's the goal. Uh, now for some green legendary creatures, aside from Titania and Shigeki, we do have old Rutstein. This is going to mill a card every turn. We get some buffs out of that. Uh, we've got Spawn of Turg, so it's equal to the, its power is equal to the number of land cards in your graveyard. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, you can surveil one. So again, this gives us a way to fill the graveyard. You can also pay uh, a black and a green, sacrifice the land, and you gain two life. Uh, Slow Gurk is also in here. Whenever a land's put in your grave graveyard from anywhere, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Uh, you can remove three and return it to its owner's hand. When it leaves the battlefield, return up to uh, three target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. So get a little reuse out of this. Uh, sitting at the top, we do have a single devious cover-up as kind of a catch-all. Just a really nice thing to, to be able to counter and then exile. Uh, and then Teferi Temporal Pilgrim, one of the new Planeswalkers, Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on it. You can pay zero to draw a card, uh, which does put a loyalty counter on it. 
You can minus two, create a two, two spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a one, one counter on that creature. And then you can minus 12 and target opponent chooses a permanent they control, returns it to its owner's hand. Then they shuffle each non-land permanent they control into its owner's library. So that's basically the game ender, right? That's the other way we can win. Uh, as far as tech in the lands, because you will notice we've got quite a lot. <laughs> um, we do double up on the channel lands, uh, excuse me, here and here. The reason being is channeling them discards them, right? So like we want lands in our graveyard so we can use these abilities a little bit more proactively than we would normally do so. Uh, we do also have these sack lands here, uh, which help fill up the graveyard and deck thin for us. So those are also quite nice. But guys, I'm going to be learning as we go. I'm just telling you that now, but I am very, very stoked. This is our first look at the brand new set. Let's jump into it, guys. Let's have some fun today. Let's enjoy this new set. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. Unfortunately, none of the combo pieces in our opening hand here. However, we do actually have a handful of good things we can do, including just get all of our mana on the first three turns of the game, which is actually very important for us. So I'm going to actually keep this and use that Obscura storm Storefront, excuse me, to pick up a blue source and hopefully we can get uh, our mana in order before we do too much else. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up a blue source. Perfect. Whoops. There we go. Uh, a little slow to click. I will expect a couple of bugs with the new update and things like that. So if anything does kind of mess up here, uh, just know that I am not surprised by that. Uh, interesting. Okay. So we'll do this. We do have answers here, of course, which is great. Uh, this is an enchantment creature. Uh, so we will be able to tear asunder here if we would, if we would like to, basically. Uh, another Argoth. Worth noting, these are not legendary, uh, which is kind of interesting, but definitely inter very cool. Uh, let's go ahead and play Slogurk. I'm expecting they've got like an Infernal Grasp or something along those lines. I would want them to use it, <laughs> uh, right? Like let's, let's force the issue here while they've only got a 2-2 on the field and then we'll deal with it elsewhere. Looks like they may not have. Okay, cool. Yeah. 100% that's good. Uh, so we do get to pull back the land, which is kind of a nice little consolation prize, right? It's not great, but it's something. Uh, so I will happily take that. Uh, let's see. How do we want to do this? Uh, I mean, I think we can play the Argoth. Hmm. It might just be a pass situation. Yeah, I think it will be. Might have been worth it to have played the storefront instead. Uh, just to go ahead and get that extra land into the graveyard here. But again, we're learning. Uh, we still have not really found a Titania, which is really what we need. We also don't really have a great way to mill cards at the moment. Uh, we do have, of course, Argoth itself. So this does allow us to mill a couple cards, which is good. Um, but we're obviously not doing a ton in that regard. What is nice about this is Liliana plussing doesn't actually hurt us that much. So I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, yes. Okay, so they are going to exile the Slogurk, I assume, uh, which is fine. One thing that I do wish this deck had, just in, in practicing, I only played like two games with it uh, because I wanted to get a video up as soon as we could, but one thing that I was missing out of those two games was just a good solid sweeper. Felt like we were really missing that. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. We are, I mean, we're at 14. We've got a little bit of a life total to play with, but not a ton, honestly. And so I feel like kind of proactively dealing with some stuff. Again, it also gets a, a land into our graveyard. Hopefully they don't do too much to uh, make that non-worthwhile. Um, it might just have to be the silver scrutiny, sadly. Okay, uh, interesting. So I'm going to tear us under here. Uh, we are going to pay the cost. That's fine. I think we'll just discard a basic swamp. 
Uh, not super interested in allowing them to uh, continuously exile cards from our graveyard because, again, keeping in mind, we need the lands in our graveyard, right? So that does allow them the opportunity to deal with that problem, and I'm not super stoked on that. Okay. Um, hmm. I think we'll just discard the land. Uh, this is a problem for us. I think we just draw. Yes, unfortunately. Um, so we really don't have a lot going for us, do we? We are kind of stuck. We could Devious Cover Up. That's not that helpful. Uh, as in, we know what card they have, and it's not really all that great. So I think in this case, I'm just going to go here. Um, this does allow us to not get around the sacrifice of Lily, but it does kind of help us out here. Curious what they exile. Okay. So, ah, Besaju. Sure. It's very good. Okay. So they got rid of the devious cover up. That's fine ish. I'm not going to block. All right. How do we do this is the question. Unfortunately, we can't even like activate this is the problem. Um, hmm. Let's, let's do this. Um, okay, uh, that's pretty good. I'm going to attack here, expecting that they'll probably just block with like a 2-2 or they will just let Lily go down. Truthfully, it's not that helpful for them at the moment anyway, so they may just let this go down. Um, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, and then what we'll do is leave the Shigeki up so we can block with it, return it to our hands, uh, and then hopefully pull a land. Yeah, okay. Uh, we die anyway, though, don't we? Yep. All right. That's fine. Let's go ahead and concede, guys. Let's move on to game two. Unfortunately, just didn't get a Titania that time. So hopefully we can do a little better in the second game. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you that we send out altars every single month to participating Patreon members. Now, please don't feel pressured, of course, but if you are interested in supporting the channel and picking up some awesome altars every single month, you can check out all the details over on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash it resolves. This month's to honor some of the most impactful lands we have ever seen in Magic, we have got the Urza Legendary Land Cycle, including Sarah's Sanctum, Talarian Academy, Phyrexian Tower, and Gaia's Cradle. If you're interested in picking these up, they will be available through the month of November and will be sent to you at the end of the month. As always, guys, we really appreciate the support and thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope you all enjoy the gameplay. All right, guys, here we are for our second game. Let's see what we can do this time. Uh, not the best start again, um, but we do have the Titania. Hmm. 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 Part of me does want to try this. I think we will. For the sake of research, let's try it. <laughs> Again, guys, we're not here to make the best plays, the right plays all the time. We're here to just have a good time. Uh, we do have the Titania, though, which is really helpful from that standpoint of we might be able to, to progress our board a little bit further. We do need a blue source, of course, to get the Slogar down, but we do have the Go for the Throat, which can deal with some of these early creatures as well. So we'll see. Uh, opponent seems to be taking a little bit of time. Again, I have noticed that a handful of people might be having connection issues. Uh, so far, <laughs> knock on wood, I haven't had. Okay, looks like they're not either. It looks like they were just being very careful with their decision making. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Perfect. So we'll start off with just a basic swamp. We do want to hold on to the channel lands until we need to play them. Uh, just from the standpoint of you never know, we might find a need to uh, kill an artifact or something like that right away. Interesting. Okay. Uh, certainly not stoked to see these, right? Like that's not that's not great for us. Uh, but we will do the best we can. Uh, we are gonna wait and see what they do here. Okay. Definitely just gonna go for the throat that. 
not gonna overthink it. Uh, that gives them more creatures. I'm not stoked to give them more creatures. So uh, let's make sure we're not. Um, I will go here and I will just play Titania, I think. Uh, that seems like the safest bet to me. Uh, this does potentially lose out on the potential for dealing with a wedding announcement or something along those lines, uh, given that Beseju is kind of our answer there. Um, but they are going to guild Titania anyway, so doesn't really matter. Look, another one. <laughs> yeah, I'll auto pay. Uh, and then we'll just play Argoth. They might have a mate casualty here. Ah, resolute reinforcements. All right, get Argoth down. So now we do actually have the combo. We just need land cards in our graveyard, right? Like after that, we're kind of good. Um, hmm. Options, right? Uh, so I think we can do both. Let's kill the Adeline for sure. Uh, and then let's actually go ahead and use the abandoned buyer here. So we gain a little bit of life, gain a lot of life. Wow, that was great. Uh, and then we won't attack just to not open ourselves up. But next turn, if nothing happens, we do get the the melded Titania here. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we also do get, remember when that Titania enters the battlefield, we get these lands back, uh, which is pretty awesome. I don't think we risk the block. I just don't know what they could have. And so I'm not super stoked about giving them the opportunity here. So let's see what we can do. Please work. That'd be really cool. All right, sick. We did it. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, that's really cool. Uh, we do have to worry about them having another destroy evil, worth noting. Um, but we do actually just have some solutions here. So, okay, first of all, let's definitely get a blue land. We need that. Uh, let's just attack, oops, whoops, whoops, not what I meant. Uh, yeah, let's just attack in. <laughs> this does have vigilance again, so please d definitely make sure if you can attack in, you attack in because it can still block on the backhand. Um, and then I think it's just old Rutstein, honestly. Um, Kind of an interesting call maybe, but I feel like that's probably the right one. Sure, okay, so they did have a, it's not make casualty, make disappear, excuse me. Um, but like they didn't have a destroy evil, they definitely would have used that, right? So we know they don't have a destroy evil. Hmm, this is interesting. Will Titania, Gaia, Incarnate get, get us the win? I think it might. Gaia's really sick, guys. <laughs> uh, I've always been a little skeptical of the meld mechanic. Uh, just in general, it never was my favorite, right? Like, melding two cards is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It just seems a little tricky, a little too difficult. This doesn't seem that difficult to make happen. Now, I have not tried Urza or Mishra yet. Kind of curious to see if we can get those to work. But uh, so far, like, this is sick. Um... Opponent maybe sees the writing on the wall? No. Oh, thank goodness. Ah, ha, ha. Vigilance for the win. Heck yes. <laughs> really? Uh, we definitely block now, uh, given they've only got one mana available. All right. Um, so, we can just, like... <laughs> kind of rip into him with some very, very powerful stuff. That might be the play. Uh, alternatively, though, we can also mill a couple cards and potentially, oh no, excuse me, we can't. Uh, all right, let's just do this. Um, sure, that's fine. All right, I'm just gonna attack them. Not gonna overthink this. We're just gonna go for the big win. Sure, they're gonna block there, that's fine. So now they can exile a land, which does obviously make a difference for Titania, but like it's a semi-negligible difference. Okay, they did have destroy evil. Fair enough. Uh, but one land went into the graveyard. So now we get a 4-4 trampler. They're gonna exile here, I assume. Yeah, okay. Oops, 
wrong thing. Okay. Interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to skip to chapter two. Let's mill a couple cards. See what we get. Uh, we should have played Titania first. Missed opportunity, although it didn't end up mattering, I guess. But still. Technically, that was incorrect. We should have done that differently. All right, I will attack in, and if they want to quad block, <laughs> that's fine. Keeping in mind here, guys, we have another founding of the third path, and we have uh, Slow Gurk available. We also are going to get like a freebie, um, not a freebie, but an instant or sorcery spell essentially for free. And now we can just get Argoth. Perfect. Uh, and there we go. <laughs> Slow Gurk, doing its thing. Uh, we do only have one land in the graveyard, worth noting. Uh, and so Titania is not going to flip yet, but uh, we do at least have Titania, which is kind of sick. All right. Um, oh, okay. They just gave up. Sick. We did it. Guys, we got to win. Let's go for one more game. We got a little bit of time left. We'll try and squeak out another one. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. 100% going to be our last no matter what happens here. Uh, but definitely an interesting start. Um, let's go ahead and just play the Argoth. A bit telling, of course, for what our strategy is here. But I think actually the best play for us from the standpoint of um, it's it comes into play tapped until we have a legendary green creature and i think i'd rather go ahead and get that down now where i know it's going to be tapped and that's just okay uh titania should be very helpful from the standpoint of uh we do have lands you know going into the graveyard we gain two life back and so it's gonna hopefully if it doesn't die immediately uh, or if she doesn't die immediately, she should be able to garner uh, a little bit of life back, which should mitigate some of these like play with fires and stuff. This is actually going to be a really interesting matchup, in my opinion. Um, Mono Red is a very, very strong, <laughs> strong deck. Uh, and so this is uh, just in the meta right now, as in it's, it's kind of up there as one of the better decks. Uh, and so I do want to hopefully see if we can beat it. We'll see. They're going to Lightning Strike me. Uh, which is kind of interesting, right? Like, they could have saved that and had a play with fire plus lightning strike, and maybe they do. Uh, but this is going to hopefully either eat two cards or they just won't have... Wow, okay, well, that wasn't a good call on their end. We do have reach, so... That was kind of an easy... <laughs> uh, yeah, they oopsed, I was going to say. Uh, all right, let's do this. Gain a little bit of life back here. Uh, I guess we'll go here. I don't think it matters too much. Um, I will attack in here. I don't expect to block very often with Titania, especially at this point in the game where they will probably be able to like double up on spells to kill Titania. I think I'd rather just make sure that we... Interesting. Okay, so it's sneak attack, but for artifacts. So we kill it immediately. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what sneak attack is, it's more of an old school card. Um, it's a card that basically for one mana lets you play a creature immediately from your hand, no matter what the mana costs, and then it basically dies at the end of the turn. Um, extraordinarily powerful. <laughs> very, very powerful. Okay, and there we go, guys. We got the win. We beat Mono Red, no problem. That was a lucky one for sure, but that was awesome. Guys, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. This has been amazing. All right, guys, our first look into the Brothers War. Certainly a lot of room for improvement in terms of our playing, right? Like, this is definitely a new format. We have a lot of new cards to learn. We're going to be learning those over the next couple weeks. I will not be playing perfectly for a while. Uh, probably never, but I definitely won't be playing at my best for quite some time because I am going to be learning as we go. However, this deck really made it easy, right? Like, we basically just get a giant uh, Titania onto the battlefield and Gaia Incarnate, and we kind of just win. Like, it's pretty easy to win off of that. Now, there are a lot of things in the meta right now, as we saw, Destroy Evil, Infernal Grasp, like tons of options to kill Gaia Incarnate. However, there's a lot of big targets in the deck already, and not only that, but... Uh, it's actually really easy to bring stuff back, right? Like we've got a handful of ways Slogurk just showed you uh, in that the second game how easy it is to bring the land back. And if you've got another Titania, you can go ahead and throw that down. Like 
there's a lot of really easy ways to kind of recur this combo to make it so they have to have not just one piece of removal, but at the very least two, maybe even three. Uh, and so for me, I feel like this is a really strong contender, just a really fun deck. And we get to highlight that meld mechanic, which is again, not necessarily one of my favorites, but here I think it works really well. So for me, this was a great starting point, guys. I hope you'll take this, enjoy it. Thank you to MTG Arena Zone, of course, for creating this deck list, but we're gonna be jumping into a lot of decks this week. So do stay tuned for more. I know John will be live streaming a handful of decks as well. So go hang out with him and guys enjoy the Brothers War. It's finally here, it's finally time. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.